What's up everyone, my name is Spencer and today we're gonna to be creating a flat design traffic cone in Adobe Illustrator. And for the first time ever, we're gonna use what I think is the best method to lay out your layers and organize your vector artwork. Let's hop in right now. This is what we're gonna be making and I'm gonna leave this in the pixel and bracket vault for you guys to download. Just go to my website, pixelandbracket.com or click on the link you find in the description to download this source file. Let's start a new document, Command or Control N, or just go find new. I'm gonna create 1920 by 1080 pixels, and CMYK RGB doesn't matter. Let's go RGB, I like creating digital artwork. Okay, so here is our new canvas, and we're gonna start by creating a triangle. Let's go over to the rectangle tool, click and hold, and go to the polygon tool. Click on your canvas one time, Make sure the sides are three on that polygon. Radius doesn't matter, I'm gonna leave it at 50. Hit okay and we have ourselves a triangle. Now let's take a look at our layers panel. Go up to window, down to layers if you don't see it on the right hand side. But if you do, you should see layer one right here has a triangle on it. Double click layer one and rename this to outline. This is going to be the outline of our shape and I'm gonna create three new layers just by clicking that new layer button down at the very bottom. And so we've got a bunch of different layers here. Drag the outline layer to the very top. Next up, we're gonna name this shadows and highlights. After that, color. And last but not least, I'm gonna call this last one background. Kind of an optional layer, but background down here at the bottom. Lock these three layers, background color and shadows and highlights. And let's make sure we have outline selected. We're gonna be creating the outline of our traffic cone completely on this layer. I'm gonna zoom in by pressing the Z key and then clicking and dragging just to zoom in a little bit. And with this shape selected, we're just gonna pull down the bottom to kind of elongate it to that traffic cone look. Now press A for the direct selection tool. The shortcut key for that is A, I just said that, but the direct selection tool is up here. It's the white arrow. Click and drag to select that top point you might have to press Z and zoom in a little bit and then press A to go back to that tool. And we're going to round off this top corner a little bit, just until it looks like what you think a traffic cone should look like. Then I'm gonna select this entire shape, go to the properties panel. Any of these windows is, are always in the window drop down. So go find properties if you don't have it. From here, the stroke size, I'm gonna make the stroke eight and we're gonna keep that the same for everything in our document. So that kind of changed what this looked like and I think I might just round this off a little bit more and then we can click these bottom two points with that direct selection tool and we can pull down to change the different size of our cone here. So I'm holding shift as well. You don't have to, but you might get a little wonky like that. So hold shift to keep it in line and pull it straight down. We're just gonna size that traffic cone to about what we think it should look like. From there, I like that. And I'm gonna go select the rectangle tool. Shortcut key for that is M. Gonna come down here, see all these pink guides? Those are smart guides. You might wanna turn those on in the view dropdown down to smart guides, command or control U to do that. What I'm gonna do is make sure I see that smart guide lined up right here on the middle of that path. Click and drag with the rectangle tool. I'm gonna to create a very skinny rectangle down here at the bottom. Maybe a little bit less and a little bit skinnier, just like that. Now with this rectangle selected, I'm gonna go over to my appearance, click on stroke, and we're going to round the corners here. And I think that should create a round enough corner for your traffic cone. We might zoom in a little bit here. I might even pull these guys in just a touch as well. Remember, I'm just selecting with my selection tool and finding those corner widget bubbles that we can pull in, go up to view, uh, down to should be right here hide corner widget, you can show the corner widget if you don't see those little circles. Now, as I zoom out, I feel like the top portion is a little bit small compared to the bottom. So I'm just gonna click and drag and hold shift to kind of scale that up a little bit and get it looking like it fits the bottom section. Select both, go over to your alignment panel and make sure those are horizontally aligned to the center of each other. Otherwise, they might be a little bit off, like see this is left aligned and right aligned. We're gonna horizontal align, 
make them in the center, just like that. Okay, we are looking good with our outline so far. Next up, I'm gonna grab that rectangle tool, shortcut key is M. We're gonna draw the two lines that go through the center of our traffic cone, holding Alt or Option to click and drag and duplicate that rectangle, and then sort of position these wherever you want. So I'm just gonna manipulate them a little bit, maybe something like this right here. Next, I'm gonna click and drag on all of these elements, make sure everything is selected, and you might notice if you started a new document that your fill is white. So I'm gonna just select none for the fill. And you can click on the fill or the stroke to highlight that. And if you select none, it's gonna change that Commander Control Z to undo. So whichever one is in front is where that none is gonna apply. This color guy popped up, we're just gonna exit out of that. Now, after you do that, I noticed one thing. We had scale strokes selected. So that means when this guy scaled up earlier, our stroke weight actually scaled up as well. In the transform panel, in the properties panel, there's a little ellipses here, and you can see scale corners and scale strokes and effects are selected. So as we scale our objects, the corners, the strokes and effects, those are gonna scale as well. So we have to be careful with that. I'm gonna make sure this is back to eight point. Next, what we're gonna do is delete out some of these paths so we can use the Shape Builder tool. Select the Direct Selection tool, shortcut key is A. Just click in between these paths, so like in between these two anchor points and hit the Delete key on your keyboard. Same thing over here is even easier is to click and drag through them and hit Delete so I can make sure I just get that path selected. I'm just deleting out these paths. If you don't get it right, sometimes it might even select like the whole shape and delete the entire thing. So clicking and dragging through might help you. Now I'm gonna to switch to the selection tool. Shortcut key for that is V. Select everything up top here. Go to my shape builder tool. Shift M is the shortcut. And then while I have it out here, I'm gonna hold option or alt on PC and I'm gonna click and drag through the outside lines and that's gonna get rid of them. Click and drag through the outside lines and that gets rid of them. So now when we take a look at the outline view, Command or Control Y, you'll see that all these lines match up perfectly. That's what we want. So everything I'm seeing here is looking really good. You're gonna to wanna to make sure all that lines up so none of the stroke weights uh, look off. We're gonna switch back out of that preview mode. We're looking good with the outline. I like it. I'm going to select this big triangle shape, hold shift and select the bottom part, and then command or control C, that's copy. We're gonna go over to our layers panel, lock that outline mode, and unlock the color, and then make sure you select on that color layer as well. Go up to edit, down to paste in place, that's shift, command or control V, and now we've pasted that outline into the color mode or color layer, I should say. I'm gonna select both this bigger shape and this rectangle, and we're gonna swap the fill and the stroke by clicking this double-ended arrow right here. So now what we have is the same cone but filled in with color, right on top of where it should be. So I'm gonna give this an orange look. I like to double-click on this swatch over here, and then I can select something in that orange color space maybe a little bit more orange, something like that would work. Hit OK, and now we have an orange cone. Let's fill in those white stripes on this cone. So I'm gonna press P for the pen tool that's up here, this little pen tool icon. Make sure that you're, of course, on your color layer and your other layers are locked. Click in between these outlines and create a shape that goes in between where you want this stripe to go just like that. Now I'm gonna go over here and change the color of this shape by double clicking to something maybe a little bit more white or I'm going with just a slightly gray tone. Hit okay and it's filled that in. So we're gonna do the same thing down here. We're just gonna create a little shape that goes in between this space. You can press I for the eyedropper and select the color you want. Same with the orange. You could select orange, you could select white or whatever color you see. Using the eyedropper tool while that shape is selected will change the color of that shape. Cool, now we are getting somewhere. I like where the colors are at, so we're gonna lock that color layer and move on to our shadows and highlights up here. 
I'm gonna zoom in just a little bit more, Command or Control Plus. Let's create a shape with our pen tool again. So P for the pen tool. I'm gonna to start right about here. This is gonna be a highlight. I'm gonna to click to make a point there, come down, and this is gonna be, it's gonna go all the way down to this lower portion here. So I'm gonna click outside of the color area underneath the outline. Kind of back over here, but not all the way to the side. Same thing, and then we can just finish this up here. Now I want this to kind of be a little bit more parallel to this line, so we can press A for that direct selection tool, click on this anchor point, and I'm gonna use my arrow keys to bump it over just a little bit until I think this is a very parallel line to the side of my traffic cone. I think something like that works pretty well. Now I don't like how sharp this point is up at the top, so I'm gonna press Z, zoom in a little bit just by clicking and dragging. I can drag left and right to zoom in. That's called a scrubby zoom. Use the direct selection tool to grab this top anchor point, only the top anchor point, and pull it down a little bit. So we're gonna round off that sharpness, just like that. Now it might have dropped it down a little bit, so what I could do is click and drag to select these top points, and then I might need to zoom in a little bit here to make sure I can drag it up without changing the roundness. So I'm gonna kind of click on one of those anchor points and drag it up to here, just a little bit higher, something like that. So there we go, we've got this little highlight thing. Now what we can do with this piece is change the color of it first off, double click. I'm gonna make it kind of a yellow, like a bright yellow, something like that, hit okay. Now we've got this bright yellow shape. Over here in properties, I'm gonna change the opacity by clicking on the opacity first to maybe like a screen blending mode. And then we can actually adjust how transparent that is. So we can bring that down a little bit if we'd like, just to find where we like that highlight color to be. Something like 50% might work. And then of course you can play with the color. I feel like the yellow's popping a little too much. Maybe the screen blending mode isn't even what we want. Maybe we just want normal and we just want it to be 50%. Could be any of those. I, I kind of like the screen potential blending mode because it doesn't show the color as much on here as, as much as it shows the highlight. But anything like that, you can play with that option. Now I'm gonna show the highlight down here as well. I could create just a square shape with the rectangle tool right down here. Simply like that. Press the eye, eyedropper key, and you can click on this highlight and it's gonna change it to that color, just like that. So I like that for the highlight and now we're gonna do the shadow on this right hand side. Press P for the pen tool. I think I'm gonna start this shadow right down here. Gonna to try to remain sort of parallel. So we might even undo that. I might start it a little bit closer to the edge. So somewhere right here. Stay kind of parallel with the side of the traffic cone. I'm gonna click right in there, and then up here, I'm gonna kinda of click and drag a little bit. So it's gonna round off that corner, and then we're just gonna click down through the outline, down here to the bottom to close that path off. So if you look at what I did up here, if we zoom in a little bit, I'm gonna use my direct selection tool to click on these different anchor points. So I kind of rounded this off. Now I don't like how that finished, so I might take this anchor point and move it over just a little bit. And then I might click on this anchor point and convert it to a smooth point. So I'm gonna click on this right there. So that helps convert this to a more smooth point. Otherwise it's got kind of a sharp edge to it. Now this isn't much, this is just a tiny bit of curvature. If I click on this anchor point, I can bring it over just a little bit more. And I think it just helps the top of the shape here curve a little bit. Since the top of this cone is, is round, it's not just straight squared off. Now we're gonna click on this and we're gonna change the color. Let's change it to something like a darker orange color, like this. I'm gonna go to opacity, hit multiply on that, and then we're gonna bring the actual transparency of it way down. So find the opacity you like here and you've got your shadow. We're gonna do the same thing down here at the bottom. Press M for the rectangle tool and create a little rectangle down here. And then I for the eyedropper key and make sure you select this shadow over here. 
which will help create the same color there at the bottom. So if we zoom out, we are looking pretty good with our traffic cone. Now the last thing we could do is add a background. So we can go back over to layers, lock the shadows and highlights, unlock the background. And in this case, press M for that rectangle tool, and then just create a shape out here, double click on the color. And I think I chose something like blue, something like that for, the, uh, for that orange blue contrast. And there we go. You've got a background and your little traffic cone. So let me know how yours turned out. Hopefully it turned out really well. Once again, you can download the file that we used, both the working file and also that original cone that I made on Pixel and Brackets website, which is my website. I don't know why I said Pixel and Brackets website. But anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed this. If you have any questions or comments, hit me up down below. Subscribe for more Illustrator tutorials, and I'll see you guys next time. Thank you.